production, a lot of big money flying through here. But it was still fairly new. And in that newness, there was a sense of community that I think was being shared with a lot of the soldiers and a lot of the staff that came to Harmon General Hospital. And I think that's why so many of these people stayed. I mean, there's anecdotal evidence that once Harmon General was finally closed down at the end of the war, that and everybody kind of got shipped back to wherever they needed to go or where their next duty station was, there was a significant remnant of people that stayed, much like your father. And they loved it so much because they got to know the community. They weren't just hidden off on an old farm. They were brought in. They were made to be part. They were offered inclusion. And that made such a tremendous difference. Well, as many of the hospitals did during the time of war, Harmon General closed on October 1945. Colonel Emerson was transferred and eventually all those wards were emptied of soldiers by December. And what had been a vibrant and vital community that treated over 25,000 wounded soldiers, 25,000 passed through the doors of Harmon General Hospital, came to an end. And all of a sudden those barracks were quiet. The only echoes that you were hearing on that old farm field were the sounds of maybe a scratchy record being played or uh, the children on bicycles being allowed to ride through the, the old barracks. And it sat vacant for a year. And then Carl Estes, back in the picture again at the end of the war, uh, is flying an industrial couple, trying to lure them to bring their industry to Longview. And he's flying overhead with R.G. and Evelyn Letourneau in his plane, trying to, to sell them on bringing uh, a portion of the Letourneau plant system to Longview. And the story goes that Mrs. Letourneau looked out of that plane window and saw the empty barracks of Harmon General Hospital and said to Carl Estes, what is this? What is this down here? So oh, that was our Army Hospital. It closed here about a year ago. Little did Carl Estes know that for many years, in Evelyn Letourneau's heart, she had a desire to take those returning GIs and give them a second chance. She and Mr. Letourneau had long discussed how they would want to do a, a training institute, teaching technical skills to GIs who were coming off the field, lost, confused, no plans for the future, and give them an opportunity to develop a skill that could turn into a means of supporting their families and doing it from a Christian perspective. Carl Estes, never one to miss an opportunity to close a sale, said to the Letourneaus, if I can get you that property, would you bring your plant to Longview? And they just laughed and they said, well, well, we'll consider it. We'll think about it. Well, as the story goes, the U.S. Army went into an arrangement with the Letourneaus, gave them 155 acres, all those barracks, all those buildings, lock, stock, and barrel. Here are the keys for one dollar. There was a codicil. Should we uh, find ourselves engaged in another international crisis, needing the Army Hospital to be resumed and returned to its function, they would surrender it back to the Army Hospital. But they had 10 years, a 10-year window. And after 10 years, it would be theirs, block, stock, and free. And if you know about Moberly Avenue, and you know what has been happening on those 155 acres, you fully understand that Harmon General Hospital is still changing lives today through one of the nation's most distinctive and successful polytechnic universities specializing in STEM um, degrees and changing outcomes for kids that come all over the world and return out to the world with all their technical training. So, I don't know what the Holloway family thought when they were convinced to sell this land to the U.S. Army. But I'm willing to bet they had no idea. None. That the developments that occurred on that property 
would change the lives of soldiers fighting from here on out. And that that would also one day become one of the most premier universities in our nation. So we thank everybody that was involved in that decision-making process. We owe a debt we can never pay to those soldiers who not only fought for our freedoms, but also volunteered to be those test dummies and so much of that research and development that went on to change the way we practice medicine today. And all of that goodness was there on Moberly Avenue, 2100 South Moberly Avenue. You can see it today. You can walk on campus and find one remaining building from those World War II years. As a matter of fact, I knew that when I was writing the novel Harm in General. So I set one pivotal scene, a rather unholy scene as things go down, in the chapel because the Spears Chapel is the one remaining building on Laterno campus today from those World War II days. And you can walk into that clapboard building, the simplicity and elegance of just a straightforward prefab facility that has heard the hearts and cries of people from 1944 to 2020. And I think that's a story worth telling. So thank you for letting me share with you my uh, knowledge of the research of Harmon General. I'm going to take a few questions. I'd love to talk about this. And anything you wish to share, I'll do my best to try to answer. Yes. 